Hey guys, welcome to Juicy Tea, where I read out the best stories on Reddit so you don't have to. The funny, shocking, and satisfyingly juicy. Today's Crazy Karen Tuesday, where we encounter Karens in the wild. As per a subscriber suggestion, I'm trialling background music in my videos this week. Please let me know what you guys think. Our first story comes from the entitled People subreddit, posted by Anonymous Mouse 9594. Entitled Dad expects a car crash victim to give up priority seating on a flight. This happened last year, but I still can't believe it. My partner and I were taking a cross-country flight on a budget airline during the holidays. The day before the scheduled flight, we were involved in a car accident where our car was T-boned in an intersection. My partner was physically fine, obviously a little mentally rattled, but I sustained a fractured collarbone and a torn tendon in my ankle. We were both far from home visiting family, but staying long enough to heal wasn't an option, and I decided I just wanted to make it home. We called the airline ahead of time to request a wheelchair and early boarding due to my injuries. My ankle was the size of a softball and in a bandage. I couldn't put weight on it. Also, I had my arm in a sling due to the collarbone break. Crutches were not an option because of this. As you can imagine, Flying across country like this was already a nightmare. The airline and airports were great. This was a super budget airline, so seats are automatically assigned at the gate unless you pay ahead of time to choose. Because of the situation, we had specific seats assigned towards the front of the plane and on the aisle. I had aisle, my partner had the middle. We board pretty much before everyone else and go to our assigned seats. I was in a wheelchair the whole way until we crossed the threshold to the plane. Everyone waiting at the gate, all lined up to board after us, could see this. The next group called to board directly after us were families with young children. As the families file into the plane, a woman and two very young children sit down in the row across from us. A man says he has the window seat in our row, so I slowly hobble up and out of the way, with much help from my partner, and he takes his seat. Everyone else on the flight boards. This is a full plane. The woman across from us is struggling with the young kids, and the guy in the window seat is clearly the father, trying to talk to her. This is where the problem starts. We're waiting at the gate for the runway to clear, when this man turns to my partner, points to the woman and kids across the aisle, and says, That's my family. Change seats with me so I can sit with them. Please keep in mind, I'm in the aisle seat, the one he wants, with my arm in a sling, my ankle fully wrapped up and clearly swollen, leg extended into the aisle. Again, budget airline, these rows have no leg room, so I needed the aisle for my leg due to swelling, etc. And for mobility in case I need to go to the bathroom. I'm looking and feeling like I was hit by a truck, because I literally was, 16 hours ago. My partner looks at him, utterly confused as to how this man doesn't understand the situation and says, uh, no dude, she needs that seat. Dad man looks immediately frustrated, points again at his family and says, no look, that is my family, change seats with me so we can sit together. My partner just says no again, and motions towards my obviously broken body, and tells dad man, we're assigned these seats, and we're not going to change. Dad looks like he wants to argue, but my partner is a bigger guy, and while he's the nicest person ever, he can be intimidating if he wants to be. I've never seen him be aggressive towards anyone, but when he looked back at me, I could tell by the look in his eyes that he was close to decking this guy. Dadman dials back a tad and sighs the most obnoxious, exasperated sigh I've ever heard an adult make, and rolls his eyes. He immediately flags over a flight attendant to make his case, but she reiterated that these were our seats. He tried to get her to move his whole family together somewhere else, but it was a full flight. She checked if I was okay with my seat and left. I still can't get over the entitlement of this man. He could have paid like $20 to choose his family seats ahead of time, but he expects a clearly injured person to move to accommodate him, and then gets pissed when we said no. Oh, and he totally threw us dirty looks and made us very aware of his displeasure the rest of the entire flight. Edit. I wanted to add that I did feel bad for his wife, who had to deal with the kids solo. But it was so inappropriate of him to try and force this given the situation. Like OP said, he could have paid for them all to sit together, 
Sure, they may be able to get away with asking people to switch usually, but bullying other passengers for their seats is less reliable than just paying for them. Down in the comments, Writing is Freedom says, Next time, suggest he swaps with the mum, so she can get a break. Yeah, I'm sure he'd just love that. Our next story comes from the Petty Revenge subreddit. Posted by MyGirl326. I will, eventually, get even. Many years ago, think mid-80s, I worked in a diner in the city. I took buses to get to work, so I'd usually arrive early. This is back when smoking was common in all public spaces. I got to work about 45 minutes early for my 5pm to 2am shift, so I'd get a cup of coffee, sit at the counter and light up a cigarette. The guy working at the counter was always a joker, and this day was no different. He kept trying to toss a wadded up napkin into my coffee cup. I asked him several times to stop, that I really didn't want to have to work 9 hours with a coffee spot on my uniform. Well, he finally succeeded on his fourth attempt. I looked him straight in the eye and said, You won't know when, you won't know how, but I will get you back. Fast forward about two months later, I stopped into the diner to grab something to eat, and this is when I struck. I waited until he was in the kitchen, picking up an order, and then I dumped half a shaker full of salt into his coffee, stirred it up and waited. It took him about 10 to 15 minutes to come back out to his coffee. He took a huge mouthful and proceeded to spit it out in the sink under the counter. He was pissed, cussing up a storm. I looked him straight in the eye and said, I told you I would get even. He was shocked and then laughed about it. We're still very good friends to this day and he never messed with me again. Down in the comments, Pippa Parasai says, You definitely made drinking coffee slightly terrifying for the rest of this man's life. Our next post comes from the Choosing Beggar subreddit. Posted by Matagonia. I don't want the lunch size. I used to work as a server at Olive Garden when I was in college a few years back. There was this guy, Jay, who worked as a busser during this time and who latched onto me as a friend. Mainly because I was nice to him and all the other servers ignored him. He was kind of a weird guy, smelled like he didn't wear deodorant and had strong political opinions. But... I'd ask him how his day was going and listen to him when he talked to me, mostly because I was raised to be nice and inclusive. There was one day I didn't have class and my manager asked if I could come in and cover for someone who had to leave due to an emergency. So since I was broke, I figured I could use the extra bucks. I came in around 1pm and as soon as I walked through the door, Jay came up to me and without even a hey man or hello, he just says, will you buy lunch for me today? I was a little frustrated that he just asked without even greeting me and I asked him why he couldn't just get it himself. He said that since he gets paid every two weeks, he's short on money, but because I'm a server and I get tips, he knew I'd have to have cash for making change and stuff. Rude, but whatever. We did have employee discount on the food so it wouldn't be too expensive. I asked him what he wanted and he said chicken alfredo. I don't know if you'll know, but Olive Garden is expensive. So even with my discount, that was going to be like $13. I tell him, fine, but don't expect me to do this all the time. And he runs off to the kitchen, all excited, without even thanking me. Like, dude, what? It was lunch, and we're running a soup and half pasta meal. So I figured I'd ring it in as an employee meal, so I could at least eat the soup. Olive Garden soup is the best. I send in the meal and start doing my normal shift work. But it was a slow afternoon, so I wasn't crazy busy. Ten minutes later, Jay walks up to me and says, Hey man, they made the small portion. Could you make them make it full-sized or send in another order so I can get two? I was pissed. I told him, nah man, I got your lunch. I'm broke too, so you can take it or leave it. And I went back to my tables. He came up to me later and was talking in a joking manner about how he saw that small plate of pasta and was like, nah, I'll just leave it. Ha ha. Throughout my shift, as I went to pull food from the window for my tables, I saw that chicken alfredo just sit there for the whole shift. I still get mad thinking about it. This is why people don't talk to him. Posted by Miss Mia 004. Entitled woman needs ham sliced immediately. I work in a grocery store and lately I've been in the deli. 
but not yet trained on the giant slicer as it scares me. It's not the traditional go to the counter and order type. We slice and package everything and put it out for customers. Right now, we have one of those sliced hams on sale and this customer comes back and asks if we have any more. The deli manager told her it'd be a minute as both her and the other deli employees who can slice were busy. This woman proceeded to cross her arms and stare at me, rolling her eyes and motioning towards the slicer. So I approached her and let her know that the other two were busy with hot food that needed to get out immediately, and I wasn't trained on the slicer. She asked for a former employee, and we told her she no longer works here. She then proceeded to throw her hands up in the air and go, Is there a manager I can talk to? Someone from another department had stopped in to grab something and asked what was going on. We told them. She then sliced the woman's ham, priced it and handed it to her. No thank you was received, just a, I know so and so and I shouldn't have to wait. Like, madam, that's not how grocery stores work. This interaction really irritated me for the rest of my shift. I know this woman from church and I know her name, but for now and forevermore, she'll be known as Karen. Our next post comes from the Two Hot Takes subreddit. Trigger warning for transphobia and homophobia. Posted by Forest Ghost. Am I the a-hole for dressing my baby girl in blue to piss off my mother-in-law? It started when we, me female 28 and my partner male 31, had our first baby, a girl. We bought mostly neutral clothes to make life easier and because we like it. We got some hand-me-down clothes in both blue and pink and lots of gifts, especially from mother-in-law. She only bought pink, typically girly type clothes, but we didn't think anything of it and didn't mind at all. We put her in the girly clothes as well. Until one day, I dressed our girl in the colour blue, and mother-in-law lost her mind. She said, no, you have to dress her in girly colours, otherwise she might end up as a homosexual or a trans person. I got so angry. So every time since then, I've dressed our girl in blue. Only when we see mother-in-law, just to piss her off. It's making mother-in-law so mad every time. So I keep doing it. Last time we met up, she yelled at us to put her in girly clothes and the usual, I'm so scared she'll end up as a trans person. I told her it's just a colour. I don't care what sexuality or identity she ends up having. My partner thinks I'm overreacting and that it's unnecessary to do this every time we meet. He thinks I'm being mean to annoy her. Obviously, I'll stop doing this eventually because our daughter will one day decide what clothes to wear herself. But... For the moment, my day gets a little better knowing I'm pissing off mother-in-law. Only because I know how awful she can be to people. It's my little revenge, if you will. So, am I the a-hole? <laughs> Next time she freaks out that wearing blue will turn your baby trans or gay, tell her, don't worry. Like you said, changing sexuality and gender is really easy. We'll just put her in pink and switch her back. But, in all seriousness, having your daughter grow up around comments like that could be really harmful. I love the pettiness, but maybe a more serious response is needed. Our last story comes from the Entitled People subreddit, posted by Aunts Unto 3 a My mum constantly says, I'm the exception. Every time I try and correct my mum for doing something she shouldn't, like parking in a handicapped spot, she'll tell me, I can do that though. Like, no, you're not special. She tried to get me a job at Sephora, but they don't hire until you're 18. She thought she could get me a job there because she knows the manager. She always jokes about how when I was little, I'd get upset that she parked in handicapped spots. I still do. It's not right. Real handicapped people need to use those spots. They're not for you. Wow. She's basically letting everyone know that a small child had a better moral compass than her. Isn't she embarrassed? Remember, I post new content every day, so subscribe for more juicy tea.